MGTV USA. Οι δραστηριότητες της ελληνοαμερικανικής κοινότητας με βίντεο και πλήρες ρεπορτάζ. Today we are going to have the first National Hellenic American Genealogy Conference. Uh, it's what we talked about, what I talked about actually when I was in Greece, when I made a presentation to, uh, to the Greek uh, or the American Hellenic Chamber of Commerce there, and it was in the newspapers. It's something we announced. We basically gathered people from around the country who were interested in Hellenic uh, genealogy, Hellenic history, culture, and we put together a fabulous program. Uh, we've had uh, George Tsellos uh, speaking to us today in terms of uh, Ellis Island and their records. We had people speaking on the Greek archival records. We had other source material. And we discussed a very important topic, which is Hellenic genealogy tourism. Uh, it's going to be a great event. My name is George Tsellos. I'm the archivist at the Statue of Liberty and the Ellis Island Immigration Museum and I was one of the presenters today here at the first annual uh, Hellenic Genealogy Conference. Uh, the presentation that I gave talked about our work at Ellis Island in assisting people with the history of immigration and in particular dealing with the ship passenger lists that many genealogists use. And basically what I was saying was that they're somewhat difficult to use because the older ones are all handwritten, people's names are sometimes hard to read, and on the databases, which are online, which are very, very important for getting to these, uh, to these passenger lists, they're indexed by people who look at the database and write up the index, and if they make a mistake on writing down what they're seeing on the original passenger list, there's going to be problems with the index. So people have to be uh, gather as much information as they can because if they start with the passenger list, they may have some problems. In many cases, it's better actually to start with the naturalization papers when uh, Greek immigrants became citizens. So I was just trying to communicate to people the complexity of working with these documents. It can be done. We can offer them help in doing this. Uh, from our archives, but people have to come with some information. They can't just say, oh, my great-grandfather's name was uh, uh, Spiros Agnostos, and uh, can you find him on the passenger list? We, we can't do that. But uh, we're glad to help in other ways, and we definitely want to help not only the descendants of Greek immigrants, but of all the other immigrant groups who came to the United States to research their backgrounds. My name is Kathy Belukos, and I'm co-founder of the Greek Museum, the Center for Greek American Heritage. My group is trying to establish an immigrant Greek museum here in New York City. After all, we were the portal area for thousands of Greeks who came in. And unfortunately, up to now, there is no place to preserve and tell the story of the Greek immigrant as we exist today. They started coming from the 1850s. They were successful people. Many of them were business people far before the mass input of uh, immigrants that came into the 1900s. So we've been collecting stories, pictures, artifacts, material, and of course we need the support to raise awareness to our story. Unless we get something concrete down, our story is going to get lost. We intermarry, the material gets lost, people don't know what to do with so many of these precious parts of our history that should be included here in the New York City area. We are very proud and happy that Chicago is up and running. We need to have something like that here in New York, and that's our mission. We uh, have a website, it's called the Greek Museum, the Center for Greek American Heritage. We're chartered, we're nonprofit, and uh, we want people to know that we exist. Uh, my name is Anthony Galitsis. Um, I was uh, born in Astoria, New York. My parents, both parents are from uh, Epidos. 
And I've been doing uh, my family tree from uh, 1957. Uh, ever since then, I've gotten more than 1,300 names. And I started doing my wife's family tree as well. So altogether, we're very close to 17, 1,800 names on the family tree. That's why I was very excited today to see, uh, whoa, a lot of people are interested in genealogy and their ancestry. Uh, and uh, it's nice to hear their stories. My name is Georgia Kylan, and I'm the administrator of the HellenicGenealogyGeek.com website and Facebook group. And this was formed for people that are doing research and on Greek heritage. A lot of second and third generation people are trying to do their research and are looking for help. We have 5,500 members as of today, and they're all very helpful. And um, our next conference might be in Chicago. We'll see. We have a lot of interest. So here we go. Everybody's interested. Let's see what else we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Δέσποινα Πετρίδη, Δέσποινα Σιδεράτου Πετρίδη, κατάγομαι από το Δαφνώνα της Χίου. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for inviting me here and basically the message that I want to give is that we are our ancestors and you really have to love history and to keep their memories of life and if you want to do it, you can do it. You have to keep good intelligent people around you, get to the archives, start researching and find all those fascinating stories, the good and the bad, write it down and give it to your children for posterity because that's what it's all about. I'm Professor Peter Moskos of John Jay College of Criminal Justice and the author of the third edition of Greek Americans Struggle and Success, um, co-authored by my late father, uh, Professor Charles Moskos, of, uh, formerly of Northwestern University. So I'm pleased to be here at the genealogy conference in New York City and uh, speaking about the history of Greek Americans, about the, the, the mass migration in the early 20th century, but I think more importantly is the continuation of Greek America today through um, through intermarriage, um, through Greek Trump identity, um, and that kids of mixed marriages uh, feel more Greek. And it is through this, because we are no longer an immigrant community, the average Greek American, the Greek American is more likely to be born in America than the average American. Um, we're fully American now, um, and it was a struggle for our ancestors, and by and large, um, it's mostly been a success, so I, I hope that continues. I find it interesting that uh, many of the people who are here today have gone through uh, similar trials and tribulations that I've gone through over these past uh, 40, 50 years uh, that I've been uh, doing my research. Uh, the difficulty of getting information, the uh, difficulty of uh, even, even things that are written uh, in the archives of Ellis Island, you can't even read the, some of them, the, the handwriting is so bad. So it's nice to know that it's not me, uh, that's the way it is, and uh, there are people around who can actually help you with the, uh, uh, the, the problems of uh, research and getting translations and what have you. Now I speak Greek, I read Greek, but some of this stuff, let me tell you, very hard to, uh, to understand and to, uh, to decipher. So I'm very happy that uh, this kind of thing is happening. Uh, I'm happy that it's here in New York. Uh, but if we have to go to Chicago next year for uh, year number two, then that's fine with me, no problem. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. I just saw someone who's just a fantastic person. He's, a, he's, at, he's at all our events. Uh, just a great ambassador. Uh, he's, he's the uh, Council General of the Hellenic Republic here in New York. He's doing phenomenal things as it relates to culture, and, he's, and he supports uh, the Hellenic American community as, as we also try to support him. If you can say a few words, Georgie Lugopoulos. Welcome. It's a pleasure to see so many people here be, being interested in that uh, extremely interesting topic, and uh, I would like to commend uh, Lucas is thinking about it and, and make it a reality. Uh, I hope uh, you will stay through the day. And uh, well, at least when you leave from here, you will know more about your homeland than uh, when you came. Enjoy the day and thank you very much. So what we did is, is, uh, is uh, put together a few people who can talk about the Greek records beyond uh, Dr. Minota's presentation, which you will get. And I'd like to introduce uh, the first speaker, on, uh, uh, who's uh, Michael Kalavitinos. Uh, Michael is uh, also a co-chair of this particular event. He is, he is in, the, uh, in the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce and the uh, Education and Culture Committee. 
And uh, Michael has done a lot of research on his family, uh, extensive research in Greece. He was born in Greece, he's bilingual. You see him, you hear him, you think he was born in the United States, but the reality is he's totally lingual in both languages. Uh, and the Calabritinei are also related to me through marriage. Michael Calabritinos. Thanks everyone, and uh, thanks to everyone that came out uh, today. Obviously it's a Saturday, and I'm sure you have other interesting things to do on Saturdays, but uh, I'm hoping you're enjoying the, uh, the conference. This is the first of its kind. I think uh, Lou and, uh, and others have done a tremendous job in putting this thing together. Uh, I want to give a round of applause. Thank you. So what I, I want to do two things, really just um, really follow up a little bit on what Lou mentioned in terms of, I have to raise the uh, microphone here. Um, in terms of the National Archives, or as they're known in Greek, so be, they're physically based in Psychiko, for those of you, I think all of you probably know what that is, uh, is a suburb of Athens. Uh, if you, and I'll go into a little bit of what you might find there, and uh, what maybe some of my experience has been as well. But uh, I do encourage you, if, uh, if you are, and hopefully you are embarking on your own, uh, family tree, genealogical investigation or research that you go there physically. Uh, yes, there is an online site. You will find a, a plethora of information, but I do recommend that you uh, you do, if you are in Athens, that you do spend the time uh, to go there and perhaps to, to be a bit patient as well, uh, in the sense that uh, if you're looking for something specific related to your family, that you should give them at least uh, you know some notice ahead of time and they will be more than helpful uh, to produce documents and help you find what you're looking for. So a few things, and I, I don't want to go into a lot of lists because uh, I don't want to put you to sleep. Uh, this is always probably the, the, the toughest uh, presentation after lunch. So I hope you uh, I hope you can follow me. But some of the things that uh, you may find at the National Archives, of course, uh, one, public archives, two, private archives of uh, persons and families, three, notarial archives, four, educational archives, fifth, ecclesiastical archives, and I want to highlight the last one a little bit because I think it's very interesting. One of the things that I found was a, uh, a document uh, from the from the ecclesiastical archives of uh, roughly 18, I forget the date, 1830 or so, which actually shows one of my, several of my family members having uh, moved to Nafnio number one, but more interesting shows that after the war, or during the war, I should say, after the War of Independence, and and in subsequent years, there were massive migrations of populations all over the place. And one of the interesting things that it shows in Nafriel that there was a huge influx of Cretans. Uh, so those of you that are of Cretan ancestry, you may find the ecclesiastical archives as something very, very interesting. I, I thought that was uh, quite fascinating. So again, remember, a lot of movements of population, north, south, east, west. Um, and again, remember, this is a journey. Uh, for those of you uh, that have, many of you that have embarked on this process, it is a long journey. You're going you're to have to be patient. Uh, you're not going to find all the answers. You're going to have to make some assumptions. And it's a mosaic. It's a mosaic of, uh, of putting the pieces uh, of your family tree and genealogy together. All right. I was just, uh, I was just talking about uh, the fact that um, you're a young man, you're, you're a university student. You are definitely one of the top Hellenic genealogists right now. And you certainly are going to be maybe the number one uh, Hellenic genealogist in the world, Gregory. Maybe in time. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is my pleasure uh, to introduce Gregory, who is a, a young man, as I said. He's a historian. He's a genealogist. He's a person that many of us got to know on, um, on Facebook. He is a friend. He's some of your friends, obviously. Uh, has been always a part of Hellenic Genealogy Geek. And he's going to speak to us on his research that he did for the Gates program, uh, Finding Your Roots, that uh, went not only into, uh, into uh, uh, Dr. S uh, to, uh, George Stephanopoulos, but uh, other Hellenes. I think it was called Ancient Roots. So Gregory, if you can, uh, please start your presentation. Everybody have respect for Gregory and uh, try to keep uh, quiet because he is coming from Skype, from Athens, live. Yay. 
So, it's an honor to take part of this conference, and I would like to thank Elias for giving me this opportunity. The interest in LN genealogy has incredibly risen during the last few years. It does seem that this crisis is an opportunity for Hellenism to get more creative while emulating its past. Last November's Hellenic genealogy episode of Finding Your Roots was indeed a proof of this growing interest in Greek history and ancestry. When Professor Gatesing contacted me last year, I was surprised at the age of 18 and have never dreamed such a project to be assigned to me. But also I was really worried as to whether I could accomplish a research expanding in such a wide field of places, areas, families, and history. Now, the difficulties of genealogy research in Greece are probably known to all those into research. Many places records were destroyed during World War II, others during the Greek Civil War that followed, while unfortunately others have been either destroyed or lost because of some lack of uh, regional administration or interest. The general state archives you talked about before are now probably the most organized and well preserved archives in Greece. The church archives are harder to access, and a productive research counts mostly on the local priest's willingness to help. Except for these obstacles, it's known that it's probably almost impossible to trace Ottoman records, but I decide to read them. Thus, there's almost all dark regarding the period before the Greek Revolution of 1821. Moreover, people in Greece are still not really familiar with genealogy, so most times, when they hear about uh, ancestral research, they are rather suspicious. As you understand, the outcome of research can never be less than doubtful. The material I provided Gates with was times more extensive than what was finally used. We are talking about at least 180 documents and photos. Imagine that George Stephanopoulos' interview, during which they presented him the material I had found, took some five hours. That corresponds to all some 15 minutes in the show. Well, it's obvious that I cannot present all the findings in one day. For this reason, and due to the lack of time, I decided to talk mostly about Stephanopoulos' as part of the research. Tina Fay's and David Sedaris' research was really interesting too, but I feel like George Stephanopoulos' one was unique. Also, uh, I decided to give you something spicier. I'm going to talk just about what was not shown on TV and give you an idea of how extensive this research actually was. I'll try to let you experience, in some way, the background research. Now, all we had at the beginning was just what George knew about his ancestor. His father, Reverend Robert, contributed to the collection of the base information too, but still we didn't know more than George's grandparents. Here starts a research expanding to all Western Greece and half of the Peloponnese, taking more than 50 hours to be completed. My first step was to read all the information available and search for every single detail that would give us some directions. Nonetheless, I soon realized we had so little information that this research could definitely not be done from my study room. Also, the villages we were interested in were small, hidden in the mountains of Ahaya and Olia, and not very well known. It was obvious we needed history's help. I headed to the local old bookstores of Patras, Ahaya's capital, but with no luck. There was absolutely nothing regarding the two villages I was looking for. But uh, that afternoon I visited a friend, told her about what I was looking for, and she said she knew an old man that had written a book about Saravali, George's mother's village. Unfortunately, there were no copies of that book available, so there was only one way, calling the 90 years old author himself. <laughs> Fortunately, he wasn't 100% there, <laughs> so I told him what I was doing, and he gladly agreed to give me one of the two last copies he had. When I finally opened that book, I was shocked. Lots of information about the family of George's mother and her village, including stories from World War II, from the Civil War, and many, many, many family names. That was seriously a treasure. My next step would be archival research. So I spent the next few days at the study hall of the General State Archives of Patras. I was now looking for municipal records, such as the Motologion and Mitro Areno, as well as for school records. What I figured out, though, while researching in the school records, was that there were 
many Tsefuyas, George's maternal grandfather's surname, all around Patras. Thus, I need to be really careful not to confuse the families. In order to send PBS a school record, I should be more than 100% sure that it refers to George's family. Due to this difficulty and a lack of school records from Saravali and Calithea, the school records research didn't go that good. But, while disappointed, I came across some news on walls that threw tons of light on their research about George's maternal grandmother, Margarita Nicolopoulos. Although George's grandmother was not included in that wall, probably because she had immigrated to the States, I concluded that that was her family's registration, since all the siblings' names would match. With this single record, we managed to go two generations back, from 1913 to the 1850s. Yet, we had no records regarding George's maternal grandfather, Andreas Tafuyas. There was not a single municipal record from his village, California. So, what way would I move? I thought contracts should be my next step, so I came off to the General State Archives of Patrons. I spent three mornings there looking through the 19th century indexes, tracing all the relevant surnames and reading the old handwritten contracts, you know, with that special smell old paper has. Now, although I couldn't find a useful contract, I had to be I had to read all the indexes and relevant contracts to get sure I was done with that material. I was being encouraged by an old man sitting next to me, looking for one single contract for some eight years. I thought, man, you should not complain. <laughs> All I managed to find finally was one tiny signature. Constantinos A. Tafulias. Constantinos was George's maternal great-grandfather, and his son's name being Andreas, I concluded that that was what this tiny A stood for. We had found George's great-great-grandfather's name with the help of a little signature at the end of a loan. It seemed that our research had started going really good, but then we hit a brick wall. There were no other archives available at the GAK of Patras. I could have stopped the research at that point. It really seemed we were unable to go any further back. However, the excitement of my last finding will, will let me stop. I decided to go to George's village, Calithea, myself. That was a big decision. I was going to go to a small, unknown village, hidden in the mountains, without knowing anyone who would prove helpful. Still, I got the bus from Patras and headed to the place that could probably not give us a single clue. I arrived at the village of Scrap Noon. I was all alone, right across the square there was a traditional cafe, a cafe meal, with several old men discussing politics. <laughs> I went close and asked if anyone could help me find the Tafulias. Then, an old man stood up and said he would take me to the right person. We walked down the main road of Calithea and stood outside an old house. We saw an old man working at his garden. He was George's uncle. I explained to him who I was and what I was looking for. With a white smile, he invited me to his house. Before saying anything, he showed me a photo. On its back, there was a small letter written by Reverend Robert Stephanopoulos, George's father. I was so excited. I immediately got a photo of the small letter and asked him to tell me anything he knew. In about 10 minutes, I knew all the family's history. How they fled from the mountains of Arcadia, how they were engaged in the revolution, names, dates, stories, and everything the old man knew. Whoa, it was like one of these moments, and after hours of research, I won't So, after hours of research, you can expect to find something that rewards you for all the time you dedicated. But the best part was here about to come. George's uncle told me about the Tafuyas ancestor that had been born in the beginnings of the 19th century, about the 1820s. His name was Demetrius. According to the tradition, he was a very smart, self-taught man, and people would often ask him to participate in trials. When he died at the age of 
100, he was blind. Just like all the wise men, particularly those inspired by the news. What was really interesting in his story was that at the old village located even higher up the mountain, there was a church of St. John Chrysostom that, according to George's standpoint, had something to do with Demetrius Tafulius. I could not but visit it. Not having any idea where I would find the old village and the church, I got a local taxi and headed to my next destination. With the driver's help, we found the village, and after a while we found the church too. It was an old church built obviously in the 19th century. I could feel there was something waiting. I was looking for anything that could connect the church to the family. You know, oral history is really interesting and helpful for researchers, but trying to confirm it is another story, and actually a really important one. We needed proofs to present all this oral information to George Stephanopoulos and all the TV viewers. I couldn't enter the church because it was locked. I had to work with just what was outside it. I asked to be a walk around the old building but found nothing. <laughs> I got a deep breath and started again. I was eyeing every single detail on the church's walls. Nothing at the back of the church, nothing on its northern wall, nothing on its southern one, and then a loud moment of deep silence. An inscription was adorning the wall above the church's west and central gate. I was amazed. I immediately started reading the old inscription with all. This temple was built in 1879 during the guardianship of Demetrius Tafulias. Well, I couldn't believe my eyes. <laughs> it was just like when I discovered David Sedaris' great, great, great aunt's registration in the Ottoman Pasha Ibrahim's captive list of 1825. That afternoon, I concentrated all the new information into a report which I sent PBS the very same day. I was now actually done with George's maternal line, wanting to go back to 1785. It was time for his father's line. A new research began here. Reverend Robert's village was near Pirco, Syria. I could do no, no research from Patras, so here the decision was easier. For one more time, I took the bus and visited the German state archives of Pirgos. The lady working there was pretty helpful and gladly handed me all the school records available. This time I was lucky and I found George's grandparents in the school registers of their village near Hori and also all of their grades for each trimester in all their classes. Religion, Greek, arithmetic, history, geography, natural history, gymnastics, calligraphy, drawing and singing. I also managed to trace some mutual arena records that gave us several more names and dates. This time, I was done just in one morning. There was only one thing left for me to do. When running such a detailed research on a family, you always need to be prepared to expand your research in a very, very large area. In George's case, this area included Ahaya, Ilya, and Arda, a city in Icarus, plus almost all of Western Greece. Regarding Arta, I needed to find evidence of George's grandfather's graduation from the Theological Seminary of the city, one of the few theological seminaries in Greece. George's grandfather, Georgios, was just like his son Robert, a priest. Again, with the help of the local General State Archives, I was able to get his graduation paper dated 1932. Well, the time had passed, and there was no more time available. I sent the last results of my research to Professor Gates' team, and I was patiently waiting for George Stephanopoulos' interview and reaction to the research we had run. I think that the final outcome has satisfied the expectation of both Gates' team and George Stephanopoulos. Thank you. Hold on, Small question. Have you spoken to Father uh, Stephanopoulos? No. Okay, Father Stephanopoulos, please come forward. Uh, just say a couple of words to, uh, to George. To George. No, no. First of all, let me thank you very much for uh, the excellent research you've done. Uh, we didn't see any of that, very little of that, I should say, especially on George's father's side, my side, uh, in, the, in the Gates presentation because as you indicated, there was only about 50, 
15 minutes uh, devoted to that. It was mostly the Nicolopolises, and that's fine. And that's your food is. <laughs> but um, uh, I think our side is pretty. My one question has to do with, uh, and probably you had nothing to do with that, but at the conclusion of the program, Mr. Gates, Dr. Gates, indicated that there was a DNA testing, both of George and uh, Tina Fay and uh, Sedaris. Uh, Fay and Sedaris came in at about 50% less than that, being Greek. George came in at 99% Greek, which amazed him as well. But I, I just wonder how far back they went. It seems a little confusing to me that there would well, given the presentation we had earlier um, regarding uh, DNA testing and the, uh, the existence of Greeks um, being uh, inundated by a number of different people throughout the ages, how it's possible that anyone could have preserved their Hellenic or Greek heritage, uh, uh, Roman heritage, if you will. Well, it's um, a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're dealing with miracles, so that's it. I want to thank you, though, for, for a very fine job. I appreciate it very much. We'll be coming to Athens uh, later this month, uh, the month of May, and perhaps we can look you up and, uh, and talk about this uh, a little more extensively. Thank you. Thank you. We're running, we're running a little bit late, but we're going to cut some of the back end a little bit short also. Uh, if, Gregory, if you can, give us your email address, okay? Right. Then, don't forget what we are. We're the Hellenic American Chamber of Commerce. We're interested in commerce for you. Give us, give us your email address. It's k dot Gregory. And then, uh, uh, how do we say it? <laughs> it's a. Uh, yeah, and line which is down. Yeah. Uh, you, what I did was I asked Father Eugene Pappas here at Three Hierarchs Church to write me a letter of introduction. We sent it to the bishop, and they were waiting for Gregory and I when we walked in the door. Next record. Uh, this is a copy, this is the state of the books, folks, in Greece. These have got to be digitized and they've got to be preserved. This is the marriage record, next slide please, of my great-grandmother, uh, my great-grandfather, Baneotis Yanakos. It was a Papa Yanakos, so now I know that in 1867, it was not, the family was not Papa Yanakos, it was just Yanakos, and his marriage record, okay? <laughs>spectacular uh, day everybody had a great time we had people from all around the country everyone even in the breaks was talking it was all about genealogy all about Hellenic history fabulous fantastic thank you all MGTV USA y dracteriotites de Selena Americanikis kinotitas me video que plires reportas episkeftite tin esto selida mas mgtvusa.com calyptume cathimerina ta que bonotas tin homogenia